Hi everyone, it's Christy here, and I'm going to talk about how to solve an absolute value equation. But before we get to solving an equation, I first want to talk about what even is an absolute value. Absolute value is how far a number is from zero. So when you see these absolute value symbols, you want to think how far away from zero is that number? So we think about the number three, we think about, okay, how far is that number from zero? One, two, three. That would be three units from zero. Okay, what's the absolute value of negative three? Well, negative three is right here, and negative three is one, two, three, also three units away from zero. So the absolute value of both three and negative three is three. Now notice something, an absolute value can never be negative. And the reason is, is because we're talking about a distance. You wouldn't say, if I asked you, how far do you drive to go to school? You wouldn't say, oh, I drive negative three miles. You would say, I drive three miles, and then it would depend on what direction you drive. So because absolute value is a distance or how, how far the number is away from zero, keep in mind, it will always be positive. Let's take a look at an equation that has an absolute value. Here, this means I'm thinking of some number x and because there is an absolute value symbol, I'm thinking of a number such that the distance away from zero is three units. So what number or numbers would be three units away from zero? Well, I think that's if x were equal to positive three or negative three, because both three and negative three are three units from zero. And in fact, if we checked our work, well, we have exactly what we had on the last slide. The absolute value of positive three is three, and also the absolute value of negative three is also three. In this next problem, this means the expression x minus 15 is eight units away from zero. So what could the expression x minus 15 be? Well, x minus 15 could be equal to eight since Eight, positive eight, is eight units from zero, but x minus 15 could also be negative eight, because negative eight is also eight units from zero. So once again, I'm thinking of, okay, the expression x minus 15, because it's inside absolute value symbols, is eight units away from zero, therefore that expression could be eight or negative eight. Now notice we have written two equations, and that's why, because it's an absolute value problem. A lot of times students just memorize, oh yeah, it's this problem that you write two equations. But instead of memorizing, think more about understanding, understanding why we write two equations. And notice that the eight is what is positive and negative, not the negative 15. Sometimes as a teacher, when I teach absolute value equations, I see the negative 15 is changed signs, but it's the eight that is positive here and negative and negative here. So keep that in mind. All right, in both of these, I'm going to add 15. So on this side, I get an answer of 23. And over here, I'll do the same thing and add 15. And I get an answer of seven. Now, in fact, both of these answers are correct and you can always double check, remember, by checking your work. So if I plugged in 23 for x, 23 minus 15 is eight. The absolute value of eight is equal to positive eight. Or if I plugged in seven, seven minus 15 is negative eight. The absolute value of negative eight is positive eight. So they both work, which is fantastic. Now in this example, I don't want you to be alarmed if you see the constant, in this case 20, on the left-hand side of the equation. We still have an absolute value equal to a constant. So in this case, the expression 4y minus 10 is 20 units away from zero. Therefore, 4y minus 10 could be equal to positive 20. Or 4y minus 10 could be equal to negative 20 because both 20 and negative 20 are 20 units away from zero. And this is an absolute value problem. Now, notice, and I did it without even noticing, I actually flipped the equation. I think it's just habit. I usually put the constant on the right side, but you can absolutely keep the 20 and negative 20 on the left-hand side. I think it's just a habit for me as a teacher. All right, let's add the 10 over and divide by 4 which gives me 30 over four, which reduces to 15 halves. 
right over here, same thing. Let's add the 10 and divide by four. Then we get an answer of negative five halves. Once again, you can always check your work by plugging your solution back into the original equation to check. And once again, notice it was the 20 that was positive and then negative. It was not this sign right here that changed when I rewrote it into two equations. If you're finding this video helpful so far, make sure to click subscribe so that you can see weekly math videos. Let's take a look at another example. In here, we have a little bit more going on rather than just one absolute value like we saw in the rest. Now what's important here is it's important to isolate this absolute value. Now oftentimes students want to distribute in the negative three because they're thinking of a problem that looks like this. With parentheses or grouping symbols, yes, you can distribute in a negative three. But unfortunately, with absolute value, the distributive property does not apply because these are absolute value symbols rather than grouping symbols. So just a reminder here, we cannot distribute in negative three. And instead, I should add five to both sides of the equation. and divide by negative three because negative three is being multiplied to the absolute value. So to undo the multiplication, we want to divide. And our whole goal is to isolate that absolute value so that we can now write our two equations because now this expression is two units away from zero. Therefore, this expression can be equal to two or eight minus x could be equal to negative two. Let's go ahead and solve both of these. I'm going to subtract eight and then divide by negative one. Likewise, subtract eight and divide by negative one. And I get six and 10 as my solutions. Once again, you can always double check those answers into the original equation. I have one last equation for you and something interesting is going to happen on this one. Once again, we cannot distribute in the negative three. So like I did on the last equation, I'm going to subtract that constant over first. Now I need to isolate the absolute value. So I'll divide both sides by negative three. and I have the absolute value of x plus three equals negative five. All right, my alarms are going off, and this is why. I get an absolute value that's equal to a negative number. My alarms are going off because I can't say that the expression x plus three is negative five units away from zero. Just a reminder, an absolute value can never end up being negative because it's always the distance away from zero or how far away from zero. And like we said about in the first slide, it can never be negative. So whenever this happens, we have no solution. There is no number that I could plug in for x and add three, take the absolute value, multiply by negative three, add eight, and ever get 23. And once again, that's because we got an absolute value was equal to a negative number. All right, everyone, I hope you found this video useful in helping you solve absolute value equations and having an understanding of what absolute value means. And lastly, if you did find this video useful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you're notified of weekly math videos. I hope you have an absolutely awesome day. Bye, everyone.